huge mittens that made him look like he was like really? it was just so strange. <laughs> and I like must be I, cold like, up here for him. Looked at him and I was just like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is a postseason scouting look <laughs> where scent doesn't matter. And if these guys were using scent lock, I would be using it too. I can't even fathom scouting in season without. Well, you're good. about to do but it. Because I'm with you guys, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. We got here to the uh, walk-in access property that we were here the other day. Remember that time when Ernie got us stuck? Yes. So like 30 seconds ago, I was like, hey, Ernie, you don't have to back out of this giant dirt road. You could just turn around, right? And he's like, nah, yeah, I'm good. Definitely not good. Yeah, that day. Uh, we were here that the other day. We're back now, and there's two guys that are in there, or one guy? One guy in there now. One guy that's in there now, uh, he signed in at 11, and then one guy, two guys that went in last night and hunted. And there's no there's no log or anything that says if they got one. It just says that they were here and they left. So they left at 8.30, which means they didn't get one, because if it had been really late, they would have signed out later because they were dragging it out. So my guess is they didn't get anything. There's somebody in there now, but the problem is it's only 50 acres, so it's not very big. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do that, or we're gonna adjust fire and go to a different spot. Um, we'll keep you posted. We're going down this road into this game area, and uh, John Eberhart was decided to come check it out with us. He's bored, I think, and he's wanting to be hunting, but he hurt his shoulder, so he can't hunt. So he wants to come and scout this place with us and you're not going to say no to John Ebrard so we uh he's gonna jump in with us and we have so much crap in the back seat there's nowhere to ride so I get the uh seat you can bleep that out or whatever but I get to sit in the middle and like the like the little 10 year old kid riding with his parents yeah that's me front there's no room in the back, bud. Come on in, John. Get cozy. All right. <laughs> I am cozy. We're snuggling, buddy. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. I've only gotten started Don't get any ideas. <laughs> Hand check. I'm in my glory now, scouting. <laughs> this I is, love this part. I like scouting more than I like hunting. <laughs> We're literally less than 50 yards inside the legal hunting zone, and there's already a big ladder stand right off the trail. There's a little knob here with a lot of oaks and a uh, big ladder stand. See how this one has beech nuts. See the holes. That's another beech tree. I say right here what we're looking for is looking at this edge, all this briars and brook ramble if there's a deer runway there's going to be a slot there's going to be some kind of a hole in there that you're going through so that's going to be easy to see with all this shit they're not going to go through that no well the spot we just found has this is exactly why i picked this property because I, I i knew that it it butted up to, to private land. Um, this big cornfield's all private, and we're right on the edge, and we're finding spots with oak trees dropping right on the edge of the corn, and then apple trees dropping right on the edge of the corn. It's like a freaking buffet here. It's a good spot. There's a big track over here too. Okay, good, I'll get it. Now we've got this big weedy area behind us next mm -hmm. to a cornfield. Now how much security cover is enough for a place like this? Uh, public land, I honestly can't see a big buck walking through that. Okay. Um, and we don't really want to go over here because we don't really, uh, hopefully there's deer bedded over there and we don't want to mess with them. We just want to kind of go around the edges here. And we're going to go up, I think this is a marsh up here, and it looks like there's some a little drier area crossing it. And then right. there's some more crop fields, three or four different crop fields. So there could be a 
variety of food out there so the deer coming from here would go to there yeah or possibly if there's some big cornfields out there and there's some deer bedded out there you know they've been eating corn all day you know just get up and eat it when they want and there's a ton of apple trees up here they may filter up through here to eat apples and eat it's a good some, spot or some acorns I, I like this spot i mean it's yeah. got a varied hab of all the stuff we've looked at this has got some of the most varied terrain and food sources yeah. a young buck a young buck would have no issue coming through here yeah you well, know a year and a half all we need is a two, two and, and a half. half that's all we need <laughs> okay. and we, we're just going to go straight south that should be the property line of the public and we should run into that marsh up here yeah we're not looking for a john eberhart michigan monster we're really looking like for that. a tag filler <laughs> yeah <laughs> Hey Zach, remember we were talking about downsizing, getting into that tiny house? So what do you think about this spot here? So we're obviously here, mm -hmm. not that far away, you got a, a you got a piece with several lakes that we could access. I mean, drop in the boat here, jump over here to this other side where there's no access, jump in, you know, here, come up here, hunt these swamps where there's no access. Have you ever been in here? No, I, I no, I almost all the public land I've hunted has been in southern Michigan, and we're kind of in central northern Michigan. Okay. I like the idea of dropping our kayak in here coming across the lake where nobody's gonna go yeah and, and just hope like hell the marsh isn't so deep right now and on the like edge hell. that See, you I'm, can get out of it i'm seeing it looks like maybe some oaks through here some oaks through here that's definitely oaks and stuff in here what's that little opening through there oh that must be a little creek coming through there yep and maybe like a little marshy area yeah it looks like a creek right there yeah it's a crab toss it is a crab toss um Obviously getting away from everybody, you know, if you can cross there and, and you can get out there and there's some, you know, red oaks in there with some dropping acorns and you know, you never know, there could be some apple trees too. Could be a killer I'm, spot. I'm guessing this whole area here used to be pasture because okay. there's scattered apple trees around here, which is typical for old pastures 50 years ago. And hell, it was tr apple trees all along that crop field on public side. Yeah. We haven't seen one rub. We haven't seen any buck sign here. None. Tracks no big tracks so that makes me think you know if you're not in the fresh sign mm -hmm. what's the point it's like we could throw a hunt at it and maybe we get lucky and something comes no. out of the corn but there's no there's no tip yeah, there's tip. no evidence that anything yeah. has been doing that and typically when you get apple trees like that next to a standing cornfield with oaks around it there's enough doe activity there should be some buck sign there right yeah maybe we should cut through a little bit inside the wood line Mm -hmm. and see if there's any I'll, any I'll scrapes or scrapes okay. or old scrapes or rubs and if there is maybe we key in on that but other than that probably bump into that other guy there's just <laughs> there's not that much that got no. me excited here no pretty piece of property though yeah the habitat's yeah. beautiful the you got you got apples you got oaks you got ag yep you got, got everything you, you got have everything. everything the habitat is here yep. but there just doesn't seem to be much deer sign so and the deer are going to be a little more consolidated because everything is so wet well well, it's uh, it's not much, but it's some of the first buck sign that we've actually seen. What do you think, John? Michigan monster? I think that's a booner. <laughs> that's a booner. Yep. We've got to set up right now and hunt. And this tree's so big, he couldn't snap it. What do you think, John? I think it's a good idea that you guys go over to the lake. Yeah. You know, you wanted to look at this opening. The opening was the best. The best this had to offer. It's kind of strange because there's a standing cornfield, apple trees all along the edge, red oaks along the edge, hardly any tracks going into that. And there wasn't any stands there. And how many stands did we see down in the timber? At least eight. Yeah, all at in. least eight. And this is how many acres? 60? 60. 60 acres. Yeah. And uh, there's a truck parked over there, so somebody's hunting there. And yeah. We beat it up. So We covered like over half the property. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. I think we uh, take the boat, take the kayak, and you got them right behind you. As long as Ernie doesn't kill 
Mr. John Eberhart with his <laughs> freaking. <laughs> Ernie's trying to kill John Eberhart. Yeah, that's okay. My wife tries it all the time. Gonna mark another one off the list. Like I said, I'm real good at finding places not to hunt. <laughs> you never know until you look. <laughs> so we did. Plus, we got to scout with John Eberhart. How cool is that? But, um, yeah, so we're gonna go put the kayak in the lake and go hunt the backside of the lake because I know there's nobody going to the backside of that lake. Um, and we didn't really find much good here other than ladder stands, box blinds, and tree stands.